Good day. I'd like to welcome everyone who's joining us for worship today. I'm Reverend Pamela Scott, and I'm pleased to be serving with Strathmore United Church. The beauty in other beings exists completely for itself, not for any reason other than the joy of existence is the purpose of life. Are you ready to let go of expectations? Divine goodness, prepare my spirit to see and be beguiled by the beauty of life. Amen. When we accept the non-utilitarian goodness of life, a world that doesn't need a why, we tune into the raw delight of the world. Beauty decenters our ego by helping us to realize that life is its own justification. As we let go of how everything relates to us, serves us, benefits us, we begin to, we begin to appreciate all things for their own worth and beauty, and our desire for their flourishing intensifies. When we turn this idea onto our own selves, we can let go of the expectations of others and the societal standards of beauty in regards to our own worth. Divine goodness, Holy One, pause us for this moment. Bear us up in this time. Hold us for eternity. We tune our spirits to truth. We begin to let go of expectations. We allow all beings the fullness of their own beauty. And all the people say, Amen. Amen. And our opening hymn comes from Voices United 303 for the beauty of the prairies, the tune number 69.
Well, another clue might be, if you want to see if you have something in your teeth, what do you look into? Yes, a mirror. Do you have a mirror close by? Oh, look at that, I can see me in the mirror. Can you see me in yours? You can see, I can see me, but you can't see me? Because a mirror shows us ourselves. So you see you. That's really good that you see you in the mirror. Because today we are going to read a scripture that is like a love letter from God. It says, look how beautiful you are. This is sometimes hard to believe. And I can tell you, a lot of us adults have a hard time believing it. But it is true. You can also trust that no matter how unique or different you are from anyone else, you are exactly who you are supposed to be, and God calls you beautiful. You don't have to try to be beautiful. You just are. Period. This week, I invite you to get permission and help from an adult to make a big heart on your bathroom mirror, right where you see your face. Every time you brush your teeth or wash your hands, and we're all washing our hands often, you can look at your face inside that heart and know that this is how God feels about you. This is how you are meant to be loved, as part of the beauty of creation. And guess what? Everyone and everything is beautiful all on its own as well. So we can imagine a heart around the faces of everyone we see. Let's pray and repeat after me prayer. God of goodness. God of goodness. Thank you for creating us. Thank you for creating us. For making us beautiful and loved making us beautiful and loved. Help me help you. Help me help you. Let others know that they are beautiful and loved too. Let others know that they are beautiful and loved too. For the beauty of the earth. For the beauty of the earth. Amen. Amen. The Song of Songs is biblical poetry at its most lush. In this book, Adoration for Another is full of metaphors from nature. The voice is like the coo of a dove. The curve of the landscape is seen as the curve of the body. Perhaps the hills and mountains are the curve of the beloved creator, and our bodies are to be seen as the beautiful handiwork of the same artisan of life. In this passage for today, the culminating conclusion is that there is no flaw in the utter beauty of the subject of adoration. That does not mean that perfection is the goal, but there is no flaw in imperfection. And the beauty of the one beheld is not dependent on the judgment of the beholder. Let us enter into Lectio Divina allowing judgments to suspend, to lift, to dissipate so that we might adore all things, even ourselves, as the dearest to whom this letter is addressed. Reading from the Song of Songs, chapter four, one to seven. Look at you, so beautiful, my dearest. Look at you, so beautiful. Look at your eyes, sweet as doves, behind the veil that your hair makes as it cascades from your head, like a flock of young goats, black ones, bounding down off Mount Gilead. And your teeth are sheep, white as the day they were born, or newly shorn and freshly washed, each with its perfect mate. Not one of them is alone. Why should we be? And ah, the lips of that lovely mouth, a ribbon of scarlet. Your temples behind that veil glow like the halves of freshly sliced pomegranate. Your neck has the grace of David's tower, 
with its jewels hung around it, like the shields of a thousand warriors, and your breasts, like the twin fawns of a gazelle, hiding among the lilies. All my nights, till the sun comes chasing its shadows, let me play in these perfumed hills, these mountains scented with myrrh. You are utterly beautiful, my dearest. There's not a single flaw in you. And our hymn is 291 from Voices United, All Things Bright and Beautiful.
part of our fundamental nature. You are worth being loved. God speaks this to humanity as a whole and to each one of us individually. We are made, created, and eternally maintained in the quality of my dear, worthy soul. No matter what happens to you in life, no matter what you do in life, you are a worthy soul, worth being loved. God loves you. Your soul comes from the divine, the beloved. You are knit together. God creates us worthy of love and never leaves us. There is no, why do you love me? We don't have to be productive or fast or do anything to merit worth. It's not that we don't do things that are important, but our lives with the beloved, with God, are not for something else. We might become a better person, be transformed to see the world through God's eyes, be part of thy kingdom come, but even if we are not, we have been made for the beloved, knit together at creation, and can rest in this love. We participate in our religious practices not to achieve something. If you are with your lover, it is not to achieve something. You are with them because that is what lovers do. Our lives are beautiful as they are. We don't need to work or earn beauty. I'm not saying that you don't do anything. Work is a gift. But it doesn't take the place of what you're worth. We are motivated to do many things. Prayer circles, food kitchens, thrift shops. Our lives might be filled with activity as we engage the world, and it is good. The energy and purpose that work gives you is a gift. The problem comes when we confuse the giftedness of energy and work and commitment with worth, particularly when we think of our relationship to God in this way. We can rest in God. It's not, if I do this, it'll be okay. Or if I do that, I will be loved. If I only do this, I will be saved. We are able to lay down this anxious distortion of work or if we are able to lay down this anxious distortion, the work will have an energy and a clarity and a loveliness to it. It's a shift in mindset. I am a beautiful creation of the beloved. Because I know I am loved, I am able to fill in your giftedness. The pandemic has been absolutely horrific. It has changed our lives. For a few, though, it has had one positive aspect. It has thrown them off the wheel of production. Their life worth is no longer based on their level of productivity. That is no longer an option. If they viewed this from a positive perspective, my worth is not based on how productive I am, but rather on the quality of my relationships. The burden of performing and producing is lifted. Once that expectation on myself is lifted, it spills over to releasing expectations placed on others. Eugene Peterson is quoted as saying, busyness is the enemy of spirituality. It is filling our lives with our own actions rather than focusing on God's. The contemplative practices are exercises that focus on releasing us from expectations that we are going to have to get it right or do it right so that we are worthy being called a child of God. We don't have to earn worthy. At their best, contemplative exercises train us to love God, love God's goodness, and love your neighbor as yourself. It is difficult to love yourself simply because you are a dear, worthy soul, God's beloved. We are steeped in work ethic. Work is a gift, but the core vocation of a human is to love God and to love neighbor. Love God, love your neighbor. You spend a few moments in the morning in prayer or devotional reading, an expression of loving God. From this you trust that love of neighbor will flow. You hop in your car and not two minutes later someone cuts you off and you no longer love that neighbor. 
less productive responses would be guilt and self-hatred. I blew it already. The day has just started. The contemplative practice would come along the lines of noticing, of being curious. Why am I so angry? Why does that hostile response pop up so quickly? This curiosity, this wondering, is a transformative process that changes the negative to a positive. Why did I react that way? I wonder why that person cut me off. I wonder why that neighbor is doing that irritating thing again. I wonder what their story is. What is behind their motivation for doing X, Y, and Z? I wonder where they feel they fit into God's love poem. Look in the mirror. Look at you. So beautiful, my dearest. Look at you, so beautiful. The Song of Songs, a love poem to you from God. A love poem to all creation from God. God created the cosmos and said, it is good. It is beautiful simply because it is. Enjoy the beauty of creation. As Shug says to Seeley, God must be pissed off if we've passed the color purple in a field without noticing it. That's from the color purple. Being alive to what is alive is the glory of the human fully alive. Wake to the reality in its loveliness, fragility, conflicts, vitality, and realize this is the sacred and holy truth of everything that exists. It matters because it shimmers with sacred worth. Thanks be to God. At first glance, doubtful. Gazing more deeply, we see every visage dear. Throughout this series, we have been looking around to more deeply notice the fullness of life, its joys and sorrows, its poignant and mundane moments, its little victories and immense tragedy. We are coming to know greater compassion by coming to care more deeply as we contemplate with more intention and awareness. Today we acknowledge the pain of judgment that comes with captivity to expectations that do not come from God, but from others or even ourselves. We hold to standards that are ultimately not what true beauty or a beautiful life is about. In this time of prayer, I invite you to open your hands upward on your lap and allow these expectations to lift. Feel the heaviness of measuring up drift away from you, replaced by compassion for yourself and by extension for others. When you're tired and feel you can't get through, uncertainty comes over you. Just look around. When your problems seem too much to bear, unsure if there's someone who cares, just look around. Whether stranger, neighbor, family, or friend, on each other in tough times we can depend. Look around. Kindness, love is ours to share. We can see it everywhere. Though it might seem like forever, look around. For even in the darkest night, things are going to be all right. We'll get through this together. Just look around. Most holy God, we thank you for the gift of creation in all its splendor, beauty, strength, and angst. Bless us with renewed hearts and minds as we relax into summer. Bless the work of our hands. Give strength to caregivers. Give grace to those receiving care. We are often out of practice at receiving gracefully. Heal us, strengthen us, be our joy, 
open our eyes to your presence. Hear us as we now pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Sometimes it can be hard to see. Life is full of possibilities, so look around. Each new day is such a gift. Embrace it and the life you live. And look around. Outstretched arms and many helping hands. Don't give up on all your dreams and all your plans. Look around. Kindness is ours to share. We can see it everywhere. Though it might seem like forever, look around. For even in our darkest night, things are going to be all right. We'll get through this together. Just look around. With outstretched arms and many helping hands, we'll get through this together. One way we show our compassion is to offer what we can, reconfirming our dedication to making the world a more beautiful experience for all. Each of us will give to the church, but each of us will have another charity that is near and dear to our hearts. The hospice, more amps, an arts organization, be sure you have offered them your donation this year. To give to the church, you can e-transfer your donation. You can go to the website and click on the donation button. You can mail or you can drop off your donation at the church.
The world is so varied and beautiful. Seek wisdom wherever it is to be found. And to may the goodness of the Creator, the companionship of Christ, and the insight of the Spirit infuse your life now and always. Amen. The peace of Christ is with you. Thank you.